Imagine having to pretend that you're interested in vegetables. This is some low-hanging fruit here, or should I say vegetables. So what's happening in this clownish vegetable dance extravaganza here? Let's take a look at the sign here, since unlike our heroic foreign vegetable dancers, I suspect I can actually read Chinese. So the sign says, Rang shi jie, lao jie he cun, which basically just means let the world understand he cun, I guess, and he cun, Zhoushang Shi Jie, which means, you know, let He Cun go out to the world. And beneath that we see Zhong Guo Da Peng Di Yi Cun, He Cun. So it's just saying the number one village of Da Peng, He Cun, or her village, which is where this propaganda event is taking place. And it says beneath that that this is basically the He Cun uh, live streaming uh, room you know so it's the place where they do live streaming from we're going to get into what this all means in a minute but basically what's been happening recently is xi jinping has been pushing for china to stop relying on the outside world when it comes to everything importing food specifically because believe it or not china actually does import a huge amount of food because the, the actual arable land in china isn't that much even though it's such a huge country so they import a lot of food they rely on a lot of imports uh, not only food, but of course electronics, uh, things like chips, as we know. The, you know the whole thing about the trade war and all the back and forth. I'm sure you've heard of the fact that uh, you know the United States has stopped allowing certain companies sending high tech uh, computer chips and things to China. So Xi Jinping has this big push at the moment to make China self-reliant. In other words, they have to be able to grow all their own food, produce all their own electronics and everything domestically, etc., etc. Now, as has always been the case in CCP, China, and of course other communist countries, is that propaganda and image is more important than actual facts. There's a fake it till you make it sort of process, and while the local governments scramble to reach the often unattainable goals set forth by the great leader, for example, we will be self-sufficient within five years. They need to put out the image that they are on track to or have already achieved their tasked objectives. This is in fact why so many people starved under Mao Zedong, you know, Mad Mao, because these communes were set up that were supposed to produce grain and well, food for the masses. And they were set goals and they were competing with each other for, you know, who could produce the most amount, of course, to please the overlord. And when they were failing, rather than admit they were failing, they would rather fake it. And what they did with it is they would take crops that they'd showed ready to the leaders and move them somewhere else so when the leaders got to the next part they could see oh look there's so many crops there were crops there and here meanwhile it's the same crops but by doing this they actually destroyed a lot of the crops and well we know the results at the end of the day millions of people starved and it wasn't pleasant the fascinating thing though is that if you look at propaganda from the era all you see are posters of sort of bountiful vegetables and grain and farming and all this kind of thing because that's what the government and the local governments and stuff want to project. That's the most important thing is the image, not actually what's happening on the ground. So how does this relate to our incredible vegetable spectacle? Well, let's look at some of the local coverage of our exotic paid performers. This has been covered to death, not only on local, but national government websites and TV stations. Here we can clearly see that this was organized by the propaganda department of Gaoling City, Xi'an. You don't trust me? Here's a little translation for you. And if you do a little light reading about this place, it's all about an ambitious project to grow vegetables in a massive greenhouse in an otherwise very difficult part of China to grow anything, as most of the land in Xi'an is very hostile and suffers from desertification. A commendable effort, to be fair. But here's the thing. Our unwitting cucumber biters are being used as a tool by the Chinese government to prove that everything is on track and that the people of Shanxi are happy and content. In fact, 
This propaganda banner that they are so proudly holding along with their impressive stalks of celery reads, Foreign Internet Celebrities Decoding the Happiness of Shanxi. So uh, we all know Shanxi is the province where Xi'an is located. This, of course, is solely to be used for domestic propaganda efforts to reassure and placate the locals and give them confidence in the government's efforts. Guys, 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 I seriously, I have no beef or vegetables with our intrepid troop of tomato jugglers, but they are a part of a growing trend of China's propaganda machines seeking foreigners to add clout to their messages. I too constantly receive invites to attend these paid government promotional tours, and in fact, I was just invited to do another one last week this time to promote how safe it is to travel in China. I'll let you know how that goes. I hope you found this video educational. It's always good to understand what you're being presented about China. Is it real and genuine? Or is it some kind of puff piece government propaganda? I must note that although the majority of the participants in this uh, vegetable spectacle have in the past made videos attacking me and my character, I do not participate in YouTube drama and squabbles, even though I'm often the target of such things. I actually have nothing against them doing these sort of clownish white monkey jobs for the local governments around China, unless they're being incredibly insensitive and disingenuous, ignoring real observable problems around them. If you wish to dig deeper into these propagandists, there is a smaller channel called Prime in China who pretty much exclusively puts these guys on blast. And whilst I do not in any way condone attacks against other YouTubers, he is shining a light on something that needs to be discussed and acknowledged. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget to eat your greens. And of course, I can't wait to see you in the next video. There is something else before we sign off here, guys. Um, I've done something rather interesting and naughty, and I would like to show you a little bit of that before we go. But I mean, this, this is a good advert, you know why? Because yeah. it shows you that you're going to be broken down fixing your own car on the side of the road, especially if you're a woman. I don't think they understood marketing <laughs> back then. It's like, this is a good car if you can fix it yourself. We're doing something naughty today. Yeah, this is kind of bizarre. So let's crack it open, what do you think? Yeah, okay, let's do it. All um, right. I just also want to point out that the woman on the cover is 50 years older than she was there. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, All right, so. She's probably in her 20s there, or right, let's no, maybe. Just, let's assume she's 20. Let's say she's 20, so she's okay. 70 now. She's you just yeah. ruined the fantasy for everyone here. <laughs> I know, I just had to point that so out. So we have the system that beats the system. We, we have to, you know, there's a lot of alcohol out There's booze there. and cigarettes everywhere. It's like that's all people did back mm. then. These are the Ballantines loyalists. Oh, yeah, now nice. we're talking. Okay. Sebring? That's a Sebring? I've got to say, that's oh. probably one of the ugliest pair of pants I've ever seen. I'll be honest, I'm looking at his, like, velour shirt. <laughs> and he's got that, like, scarf. Yeah. What do you call that? The caftan or something? It's I don't know what don't it's know. called. He's got one know. of those. Yeah. $10. Wow. That's crazy how cheap stuff was, eh? Mm. No! Wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I ran it upside down. Yeah. If you thought that was interesting, go check it out. It's on my car channel, Worthless Whips. But anyway, until next time, guys, you know the drill. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time. Stay awesome.